want to learn how to code for whatever reason, for fun, your job, curiosity, or you actually want to become a software developer, then this video can be useful to you. Whenever I start learning something new, I am compelled to search for the best and more efficient way to learn things in general and also to learn concepts in the particular field that I'm getting into. Of course, there is no one best way to learn things, but there may be certain patterns that can accelerate and boost your productivity while learning. And in this video, we'll try to discuss how you can learn to code faster. There is something you could do even before you actually start learning, and it's about setting a goal. There are a lot of programming languages and there are a lot of things that you can do with programming languages. So before you even start learning, you need to know what you are going to learn. So you need to decide what direction you want to take, what exactly it is that you want to do with the programming language you're going to learn. So for example, you could choose web development, mobile development, data engineering, or maybe you are a linguist who wants to learn how to maybe code, how to use Python or other languages used in computational linguistics. I totally get it that it can be hard to choose when you're completely new to the field, but you gotta choose something so you don't get lost in the industry. Once you thoughtfully decided what it is that you wanna start with, or when you just randomly chose something, I suggest you move to exploration step. I think it is super useful before you start any courses, you know, getting into details, learning these languages. It can be helpful to get some idea of the field. So for instance, if you decided to learn web development, you want to build web applications, you can open ChatGPT and start asking questions like, what's web development? What's internet? What's request? What are cookies? And that kind of stuff. Or if you're a linguist who wants to become a computational linguist, start by asking questions like what's computational linguistics? What are the main concepts in computational linguistics? What should I learn as a linguist who wants to become a computational linguist? And then you just explore all the concepts that ChatGPT generates. The idea is not to, you know, go into details right away, but the desired outcome, I'd say, it's for you to have a high level idea of the field, to get familiarized with some keywords, some buzzwords in the field, and also maybe to build a high level model of the field. I would recommend spending a couple of days or maybe one week to just explore, to watch some crash courses about the field, about computer science, web development, and then only then when you have some idea move on to choosing resources. We are so lucky to live today because there are so much available information, there are a lot of things you can learn online, but also there is a downside to it, it is easy to get lost. So if you're learning yourself, I would recommend choosing one main resource for each topic that you want to learn. The way I did this, I created a list of topics that I wanted to study and I thought they were important to study for my goal, and then I found at least one resource for each topic. So I had one main resource for each topic and then I had additional supplemental material for the topic. So this can be like a course, can be your main resource, you know, for the structure learning that you can follow. And while you're following this main resource, you of course will have questions. And of course, it is normal not to understand certain things when you just first read about them or hear about them. So you can use the supplemental material to get a more detailed understanding of a concept or just read once again so you can understand it. I started with HTML and CSS and I used W3School documentation to learn more about HTML and CSS. They also have documentation for JavaScript. Then I went to Freecode Camp to learn JavaScript and to build small projects. I read Eloquent JavaScript book, it was my supplemental material. I also read Python Crash Course. I got curious about Python and that's an amazing book that also has, I think, some projects. 
uh, you could build then front-end mentor website for projects and um, for project ideas and designs you can just take their designs and build up a whole application which is amazing and there is also exorcism platform and the hacker ring that i used for interview preparation for a learning new languages such as ruby for practicing bash commands and uh, that kind of stuff i always had one main resource like a course or a book or a language for a topic that i wanted to learn and I always had supplemental material. Studies have shown that active learning is more effective when it comes to coding and learning how to code than passive learning. Active learning means that instead of passively absorbing information from reading, listening, or watching, you actively engage with the material, maybe through discussions, asking questions, answering questions, teaching the material, or practicing it. And for someone who wants to learn how to code, it means that you need to be solving challenges, applying your knowledge, maybe playing around in coding sandboxes, building projects. It is essential to get this hands-on experience. So if you follow a tutorial, do not just follow along, try to stop the video and try to recreate everything from your memory or maybe even try to guess what's next research give yourself time to maybe talk it through once again just using your words and your memory trying to remember the concepts and the ideas if you do not know how to get more practice you can go to hacker rank or lead code also there is exorcism which is a lot of fun it has a lot of different challenges smaller ones that you can use to practice just any language my favorite way though was to build projects to build real life applications and websites and front-end mentor once again was just amazing for this because as a developer you don't always design and you don't always know what ui to build so that's a great place to get a project or you can actually be copying and rebuilding the websites that you already know that you like you probably won't be able to use them in your portfolio but it can be something fun uh, to recreate a website that you already know in order to make this new knowledge stick it is important to revise the material at increasing intervals of time we forget most of the things that we've learned within the first hour and then within the first 24 hours so it is important to come back to the material revise it uh, maybe diagram this if you learn something create a diagram you know trying to explain to yourself how this works and uh, also revising or or just visiting some other documentations can be good. I personally liked uh, reading through MDN documentation for just refreshing my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript knowledge. Another thing you need to keep in mind is that sometimes it is not about knowing it all, but it is more about figuring this out. As one very experienced developer told me, the main difference between a senior developer and a junior developer is that the first one has just more confidence that they're gonna solve just any issue that arises, which means that they may not necessarily know a lot about this particular technology or have a solution right away in their mind, but they're just confident that they're gonna find out what the answer is. So it is important to develop your debugging skills. This is something you're probably gonna do quite a lot. So when you face an error or an issue, make sure to read the error message, to Google it, to read through Stack Overflow messages, try different things, and also pay attention to your reactions. I am definitely someone who wasn't very patient at the beginning. It was so easy for me to get frustrated. It's getting better now, uh, but I'd say if you can somehow control your emotions and teach yourself to be patient uh, quicker, this is also something that can help you a lot. Receiving feedback or working in pairs is something that can accelerate your learning. If there is a way for you to get an internship or maybe an apprenticeship program so you can work on things and have someone review you, honestly, I think this is the best. If you can learn with someone, that's amazing. Not everyone has this opportunity, but then you can maybe look up and 
mentor online sometimes you need to pay sometimes you can find them for free for example there is coding coach website where you can find coding coaches mentors for different languages and technologies these are not teachers they are not gonna teach you things but they will probably support you give you feedback maybe provide some emotional support which is also needed sometimes also you can network grow your network to get more peers from the field uh, or maybe get some connections and ask those people to mentor you uh, sometimes people agree to this because they are willing to pass their knowledge and they want to have a community, uh, which is nice. Look out uh, for different opportunities to get feedback and this kind of opportunities because it is very valuable. Let us know in the comments what's the programming language that you want to learn and why, what it is exactly you want to do with this. I know that I have a lot of linguists on this channel, so my guess is that it's gonna be Python. But let me know. If you like this video, like it and subscribe to my channel for more. If you are a beginner, a beginner coder, or maybe you are an experienced one, let us know in the comments what was or is the most efficient way for you to learn how to code, maybe some small tips, things that are or were working for you. I'd be curious to learn. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.